أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم One aspect of Islam that is often misunderstood is the rights of women. We will now be examining the Quranic teachings regarding women's rights. جمال حسن قرآن رے جانے ہر مسلمان ہے کمر ہے چاند کمر ہے چاند اوروں کا ہمارا چاند قرآن the Quran is the holy book of Islam that provides complete guidelines for how Muslims should lead their daily lives. It is unfortunate that various Muslim groups around the world have forgotten the true teachings of Islam and are not practicing the religion as it was taught by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. So-called Islamic governments and leaders are oppressing women by misquoting and misrepresenting Quranic teachings in the attempt to maintain a male-dominated society. Because of this, non-Muslims have been presented a distorted view of the true teachings of Islam. We will now be speaking to some Ahmadi Muslim scholars who will explain women's rights in detail, according to the Holy Quran. Let us talk of those rights which has been given to the women of the United States, or women of Europe, or women of the West. You, you, you prepare a list and we, we are able to, to show all those rights given to women, or even more than that, in the Holy Quran. In actual fact, Muslim women were the first women within any culture or society to be granted rights. Islam elevated their status and made Muslim women equal to men. No other religion prior to Islam had done this. When Islam started its journey 1500 years ago, you can imagine that in, in Arabia, when there was no rule or regulation and women were treated as commodity, they had no right. So Quran came and announced that you cannot do that, stop. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave women the glad tiding that they were equal to men in God's eyes. They too would be rewarded for their good deeds and questioned about their sins. Quran says, any believing man, any believing woman, they are both equal in the sight of Allah. So it, it negates all the discrimination between genders. With the coming of Islam, the, the overall status of a woman was raised. She was able to um, receive or gain rights. For example, the right for an education, as well the right to inherit property, the right to participate in government affairs, the right to seek a divorce for certain conditions, the right to vote. Uh, when we look at Canadian history, for example, voting for women in Canada was uh, established as late as 1920. And so this is such an enlightening statistic that uh, we were given that right 1400 years ago. Barda, or the hijab, is the most visible aspect of a Muslim woman's life. Due to her clothing, a Muslim woman can be identified as such amongst other people. This teaching of the Holy Quran has also become very misunderstood over the passage of time by both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Barda goes beyond the physical, outward um, actions. It's, uh, I feel, something that starts with your mind and your heart. It's something that has been um, applicable to both men and women, um, not only in their dress, but also in their behavior. Historically, women have covered their bodies to safeguard themselves, and the Islamic teaching of Barda advocates the same. If you go to uh, a colony of Mennonites, uh, you will find the women uh, covering their heads. Uh, you can ask a Christian, uh, have you seen a nun? And if that nun is uh, coming out with the head covering, will you say that she is uh, suppressed and uh, she, is, uh, she has lost all her uh, basic human rights? So this is, uh, the, this is a sign of their, uh, their, their dignity. This is a sign of their uh, chastity. Hijab is, a, is an issue of modesty. It's not an issue of rights. It's not an issue of oppression. It's, um, it's a 
outward statement that first of all I am a Muslim that I want to be viewed a certain way I want I view myself a certain way and I expect a certain level of treatment the Islamic teaching of Parda does not stop a woman from holding down a job or driving a car such practices around the world are an example of misguided social customs and do not reflect the true Islamic teachings Islam is a way of life it's something that is not a burden for worshippers. It's a religion that you can apply in your secular uh, dealings. And uh, as a working woman in this society, I don't feel hindered by it at all. In fact, I, I almost feel uh, liberated because I'm able to do my job comfortably in a society where I'm maybe the, my, the minority. Barda is a tool for protecting a woman's chastity and righteousness. Barda is not only the physical aspect of the clothing, but the true essence of Barda is in a woman's behavior and attitude. The hijab just refines you, I feel, as a Muslim. It reminds you of who you are, and who you are are all those beautiful teachings within the Quran, the teaching of love, the teaching of respect, the teaching of kindness. Now, let us discuss polygamy, or having more than one partner, which is another teaching of the Holy Quran that is often misunderstood. Polygyny, or having more than one wife, is a practice which dates back thousands of years. No religion has specifically prohibited this practice, and it was very common in the pre-Islamic era. The Bible speaks of the prophets Solomon and David on both be peace, each of whom had hundreds of wives. Even today, there are many non-Islamic cultures that practice polygyny. Regardless of this, people still ask why it is permissible in Islam and what is the reasoning behind it. The context of this commandment is uh, uh, Allah is talking of orphans. And uh, there were orphans uh, in the society because of wars. And if there were orphans, naturally there are also widows. Uh, how Islam has... Uh, solve the problem of uh, this uh, very important issue uh, that is that uh, you cannot leave them in the society sometimes the, the the number of men and women is also disturbed the balance is disturbed because of war the holy quran has uh, given this commandment that uh, you can solve this problem by marrying more than one wife and uh, giving them shelter and taking care of the widows and the, and the orphans. Whenever there is an imbalance in society between the number of men and women, there is an erosion of morality and righteousness. You can take the example of uh, Europe after First World War and Second World War. Uh, because there was no mechanism of solving this problem, the morality has gone down uh, immediately. Even today, there are certain circumstances in which the need for multiple marriages may arise let's say a husband and wife cannot have children, he may go and marry another woman without having to formally divorce the other one. So in certain situations, you can see the need for it. In today's society, there is an enormous increase of extramarital relationships and children being born out of wedlock. These women and children do not have any legal rights and status and are in fact a financial burden on society. Islam says you cannot have a relationship uh, outside your, your marriage. So Islam says that if you want to get married, if there is a need, um, then you should announce in the society and they, th those women should be your legal wives with all the rights and obligations. In this modern day and age, when Islam is being distorted and forgotten, the promised Messiah, Hadrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiani, on whom be peace, has come to revive the true teachings of Islam and show from the Holy Quran what the essence of the Islamic teaching really is. That is why the women of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community are practicing the true Islam in letter and spirit and have the equality and peace in their lives. For more information, please visit www.alislam.org.